Hey, there we go. Good morning. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is August 14th, 2018, and welcome back to my live stream. I call it Fritz and Friends, and today we're going to be writing some code together. Uh, we've got a couple pull requests we're going to review, and we've also got some work we want to continue on our, our, our journey into exploring the CQRS pattern and working with the Mediator framework. It's a... Uh, it's been an interesting 24 hours here at the Fritz house. Before I get into that, I'm, I've got a new hat today. Check it out. NASA. I saw this. I was I was out at the mall over the weekend, and I, I saw they had a sale on hats, wandered in, and I was like, NASA? Are you kidding me? I need a NASA hat. I had one when I was a kid. I absolutely wore that thing out. I'm so thrilled that I had a chance to find another NASA hat and get that on top of my melon here. So really cool. I'm, I'm happy for that. Um, yeah, but it's been an interesting journey here for the last, uh, gosh, uh, the last 24 hours. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news, but there's been significant thunderstorms, significant flooding in southeastern Pennsylvania, the part of the, of the United States where I live. And, uh, we took a pretty good hit. Um, basement flooded out pretty good. Uh, power went out, backup generator kicked on. It was more rain than my pump could handle, so that was a lot of fun, uh, and that's going to be my afternoon today is uh, doing some more pumping and cleaning out of the basement, so it's pretty dry at this point, but I'm still going to have to do some cleanup as the water settles, um, so I'm happy to be able to take some time away from that and, and uh, join you for some coding. No, no long-term damage. We're used to this. It happens. Um, so nothing, nothing down, nothing damaged in the yard or anything. Thanks so much for the host, Code Rushed. And I see Dev Chatter also with the host, with a bunch of folks over there. Thanks so much for hosting. It's always great to see more folks joining us from other channels. I really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm always happy to be able to host other folks' channels as well. Oh my gosh. Lucky number seven. Thanks so much for the host as well. So, uh, let's see, who all do we have in the chat room greeting us this morning? Good morning, Kevin. And is that Gold Raphael? Good morning. Welsh Ronaldo, Ancient Coder, Mordecai Zuber there. Hello, hello. Flooding sucks. Was a regular happening in our basement growing up? Yeah. Fortunately, in, in my basement, everything's in plastic now. So, it's, uh, it's not too bad to clean up. Um, it's just a pain in the neck to sweep all that all that water out. Get that pumped out. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh. Uh, Clark IO. Brian Clark, thanks so much for the host. I appreciate that as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bob the Spiffy. Taking the day off to play Battle for Azeroth means I get to watch live for once. Uh, Bob's referencing um, Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Um, they That game had a big expansion that came out yesterday called Battle for Azeroth. I think this is like the sixth or seventh expansion. Um, really cool stuff. Um, interesting storyline. Uh, one of my favorite characters is looking like a real, I would say bad guy, but bad lady this time around. And we'll, we'll see how that storyline turns out. I haven't played the game in years. Um, I just don't have enough time to dedicate to, to playing that game, getting focused for a long period of time. Um, but I love following the storyline along. So good morning, Org Brad and Lane Ling. Uh, oh, your mug came. That's great, Mordecai. Fantastic. Uh, Ashley says the hackathon we raided last time was awesome. That was, that was our friend Pixel Logic Dev. Yes. Really cool stuff that, that he was working on. So great to see that. And thank you so much for the host train. Of course. Interesting storyline of NASA. What are you referencing? Okay, so enough about the good mornings and, and welcoming everybody in here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, of course, play some music to code by. Um, today I'm going to play, I'm going to go back and play the, the first song that I got called Blue. I really enjoy this. It's nice and mellow, um, and it, it really works well in the background for us here all of this music in the music to code by collection is of course uh it's designed to get you in the groove get you focused so that whatever task you're working on whether it's coding writing uh doing your homework you get focused you get it done faster and and everything else kind of 
kind of fades away and you're able to get stuff done. So this is our friend Carl Franklin that wrote this. Really excited, really happy that he was uh, able to say, yes, we can listen to this while we're writing code here on the stream. Uh, so thanks so much, Carl. Um, I hope you enjoy the music to code by. You can download it at mtcb.pwop.com if you want to buy the collection. But there's free songs available to you if you go to musictoflowby.com. You can download six songs for free, and each song is 25 minutes, and it'll get you in the groove. So thanks so much, Carl. And that leads me into my next announcement. I've got a little bit of an announcement here. Um, do I have a drum roll sound effect? I need a drum roll sound effect. I don't have a drum roll sound effect. Um, I'm going to have a stream tomorrow. Those of you in Discord have, have already seen this announcement. Um, I was I was contacted last night by Richard Campbell, and and uh, we said, hey, let's let's do a podcast on Wednesday. And uh, I said, that's great. He wants to talk about education for .NET, something that's kind of one of my passions. And uh, I said, well, if we're going to do a podcast, we usually get on Skype to record that. Do you mind if I live stream it? And uh, Carl and Richard got together and said, that's a pretty cool idea. We already do some of these shows live in front of folks, but we've never done it on a stream before. Let's do it. So tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, 20... 2030 UTC, so that's 8.30 p.m. UTC, and 2.30 a.m. India Standard Time here on the channel, and we're also going to syndicate over to the Visual Studio channel, <clears throat> we're going to have a live recording of .NET Rocks. It will not be a normal Fritz and Friends episode writing code, but we're going to be talking about education for, for .NET folks, for Visual Studio folks. I hope you tune in. I hope you join us. Um, it'll be primarily a conversation between the three of us, but we will go to the chat room for questions. <clears throat> I hope you, I hope you join me. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, live recordings with Carl and Richard are usually a little crazy. They go off the rails sometimes and that's when it gets, that's when it gets fun. So, hi, could you please provide a way to switch your stream to 480? Um, and that's from San Hulani. Um, so I am a Twitch affiliate. <clears throat> and they will they will allow it to downscale to 480 if the encoders are available. Um, so I'm working real hard to get partner status here so that they always transcode down. Um, and it's important to me to stay at the high resolution because the amount of code that I want to be able to fit on screen. So if it's not available right away, it might be available in a little bit. Keep an eye on it. Yes, Kevin, absolutely. Help me get more followers. More than getting more followers, we need to have more concurrent viewers is the number that I need to hit. So if we can if we can get that concurrent viewer number over 75 on average, we'll be in a really good place. Hey, Devin Raider is here. Good morning. 1080 only today, which means I'm out of sync and way behind. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh... Uh, Yes, so the re the recording, of course, for that podcast um, will be here on Twitch as a video on demand. Um, I'll double check with the guys if I can put it over on YouTube. But of course, the podcast itself will be over on their feed. People like gamers more than programmers. Um, they they do, and we're working on that. I've, I'm working with some folks at Twitch, and we're working on that. So, all right. Um, so there's our update. Quick 10 minutes, get everybody up to speed. Um, I want to go over here to GitHub. And, oh, I've got to call out because Kevin mentioned it right here. The Rainbow Beard Challenge. If we get that number over 5,000 by October 20th, we're uh, going to change the color of some of this facial hair. <clears throat> We're, uh, it'll, it'll be a good time. We'll get that changed up, maybe even in time for TwitchCon. And, uh, yeah, we will, we'll, we'll have a good time with that. And, of course, I'll have, I'll have it all dyed in for a stream or two here. And, uh, yeah. 
it, it that also helps get us a little bit closer to our um, towards our goal of, of partner and getting everybody great resolution. Hey, Mini Burgers here. Good morning, Mini. Great to see you. Thanks so much for for tuning in. Oh, thank you for the follow. Uh, let me make sure I say that right. The Sanhul Sanhul Ahani. Uh, yes, I am going to TwitchCon. Uh, programmers for life. Without programmers, there are no games. True. True. Um, developers just don't know we're here. Um, let's get loud about it. I think you're going to see some very loud um, announcements and marketing for September. I can't speak too much about what exactly I'm doing, but I, I can tell you that our September workshop is going to be off the chain amazing. I've been working really hard with some folks on that. That mini, that that command doesn't work here. <laughs> That's only on Fierce Kitten Stream. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know what what the command mini is trying to trying to trigger there, uh, you've got to check out Fierce Kittens uh, in the in the evenings, and I think she'll be hosting a stream this evening. She's another developer. She does crafting, uh, typically uh, crafting and game playing here on Twitch. Uh, and there's a lot of very interesting GIF commands that you can execute in her stream that are a heck of a lot of fun. So, hey, Brave Cobra, good to see you. Um, force all the MVPs to follow me. I don't know if I can do that. So we're also working on getting our Xamarin workshop up and running for this weekend. Not this weekend, Friday. Uh, we've hit a couple more bumps in the road. We think we have them ironed out. I'll have more details tomorrow. So I'm talking to that team later today. Don Wibier. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for joining us. My gosh. Um, Don's with... Let me make sure I get this right. Don's with Dev Express, right? And uh, he's... Uh, thank you for the follow. And uh, gosh, I spent some time with Don at... It was Developer Week... Developer Week Germany in Nuremberg. Um, I, I had the first day keynote at that event. It was great spending time out there with you. Yeah, Nuremberg. So Ben saw me there too. Oh, all right. Fantastic. That was a great event. I really enjoyed it. We had a good time. Um, we had a, gosh, I, it was a lot of fun to visit Germany. I, I don't get to Europe enough. Great products. Absolutely bug found. I'm always happy to support uh, the, the various vendors in the, in the .NET community that are, that are building great products and, and supporting not just their customers, but other developers. And it, right, they'll, they're happy to help you whether you're using their product or not on the, some of the generic stuff that's going on out there. Um, and of course, they'll show you some of their stuff as well. But always a really great community of vendors uh, building products for the community. All right, so I wanted to go through and take a look at some of our pull requests that we have here and then get back into our CQRS discussion around Mediator. <laughs> no, you, not quite right, uh, Janescu. It's Guten Tag with a T, not a D. Sir Will I Am. I don't, I don't think that's a black-eyed P, but good morning, Sir Will. We're almost at 3,200. Look at this. Look at this. Um... All right, uh, Minnie's working this morning, so it's cool to hang while at work. Yeah, oh yeah. A lot of people like to have me running in the background. So um, first thing I want to take a look at here in our Stream Tools project. So this is the project that has some of the cool widgets uh, that you see here on screen. And the only one right now that's on screen is the Rainbow Beard Challenge uh, little gauge here. That's actually an ASP.NET Core web page that's running on a server that's hosted inside of a Docker container. Server in a Docker container running Linux on my Windows 10 machine. Do you got that? Um, so no more pull requests have happened here. We don't have any issues really going on here. We talked about integrations with Genesco, but we need a little bit of how-to and start-up around this project, and I want to come back to this at some point over the next week and start getting into this. And um, I know that this is, it, well, it says uh, Enos Dan. Enos Dan, 
I forget his real name. Um, but we, um, this is another cool thing, right? I've got a ticker on the next screen that shows us who the who has the coolest screen name. We can kind of manage that. Um, I want to get some of these enhancements rolling again, but not until after we get through our CQRS work here on CoreWiki. Fantastic, Don. Absolutely. And we should we should talk about having you on for a, a pair programming session at some point so we can work together. There it is. That's standby reloading. I knew it. Um, so let's, yeah, Don, let's, let's get in touch and see if we can get you scheduled. Jonathan, I knew it. So, um, yeah, I've got a bunch of folks I want to have on stream and it's getting folks scheduled and figuring out what project to work on is, is kind of tricky. It's a little bit trickier than trying to figure out what to discuss on stream. It's, well, what do we work on? So stream tools, I want to come back to, I just want to make sure I call this out, that the project is still out here, and there's some really cool features that I think we need to build, the, the get started, how to get things configured, and then there's almost a little bit of configuration management that we need to think of around this project. So next one I wanted to come over to was our Twitter friends list. So this was a project that we started with, um, with Ryan Loudermilk. And the idea was when you browse through Twitter and you see somebody that you want to you want to check out who they're following. You wanted to create a private list of all the folks that they follow. XXZizo, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. 31, I think that's 31, going to be 3194 when that goes up. Six away. Um... So that was the idea of this project, and we ran into a couple of really interesting issues. It felt like there were bugs on my side, but I wasn't quite sure. And Smab did a little investigation here, and he hit this. If you try to add more than a thousand people, if you try to follow more than a thousand people in one day, <laughs> you get blocked by Twitter. That feels bad. So... That kind of that kind of puts a, a crimp in this project. Um, so we need to think about this a little bit more. A um, couple of really good updates that are in here. Uh, if there's an existing list, only add members that are not in the list. Don't remove anyone. Makes sense. Update the description. Okay. And then having a a ability to test don't actually apply the updates unless we pass this uh do it equals true when in the development environment that's a that that's an awesome feature as we're developing things to be able to checkpoint and not actually commit a transaction unnecessarily logging and timers cool details and links and then updated our twi our twitter library from three version three to version four very cool changes. I've already gone through and reviewed the changes here. I mean, on on our Razor page, just outputting a little additional information. Um, this is interesting. Introduced a DTO for the query. Um, cool. Um, and then swallow web exceptions. That was something important for this Twitter API so that we make sure that we, we receive the exceptions that come out of it and we don't um, miss this. You're right. Let's go full screen on this. Thank you. Thank you, Tall Pants. Might want to check my video title. What's the matter with my video title? Pull request. Qu continuing work with the CQRS architecture pattern. This is a pull request. We're in good. We're in good shape. Can we switch views? Yep. Already took care of it. Thanks. Thanks for calling that out. I thought it might have been zoomed in enough. Pronounced Owens Dan. Ah. Um, I'm Brave Cobra, let me come back to that in just a second, because I think I think you're onto something there. Um, login Twitter ID. Okay, get the screen name for the current authenticated user. Makes sense. Instead of um, oh no no, this is right. This is the logged in person, and then we're gonna pull the Twitter ID off of our query string. That's fine. Ensure that we get some, yeah, so exception handler was moved up. And then set a stopwatch just for the creating the list. All right, so we want to create a little logging information, and there it is, logging. 
So this, this really is making, making sense, and you've kind of consolidated up where I had the list creation. I think I had it somewhere else. So, um, and then the project is just upgrading to version 4. So I'm pretty cool with this update. Um, like I said, I did go through and review this before, so I am going to merge this, and Smab's done a great job with some other features for us. Uh, thanks for these updates. What we need to do with this project, though, to really get it to cross the finish line is um, we need to make sure that we block less than 1,000 ads at, as before we cross 1,000 ads. And then we also, if we have more than 1,000 people we want to put on the list, we almost need to schedule that for another time. Yeah, stopwatches. Do you pull and run PRs first to make sure they don't break stuff unexpectedly? Um, I usually do. For this one, um, Smab's a longtime contributor here in the community. <clears throat> so I'm, and looking at the types of changes that are here, um, I'm pretty confident in. Um, and we're going to have to come back to this to get past this 1,000 ads. Right now, it, it this is, while the application works, it's kind of broken because you won't get past 1,000 folks. I'm assuming the Twitter API doesn't let you check to see how many ads you've done today. It does. There is a statistic that you can pull that will give you that information, and then we can behave a little bit more, um, a, l a little bit better. Um, I like to say that we, we want to be a, a good technical citizen. We don't want to violate their API. We don't want to do things too much in there. But those types of things we're going to have to come back to and really dig into before we can say this is done. I've been waiting over a week for a Twitter development account. Really? Ooh. Wow. Okay, I got mine almost immediately. Like, I clicked through and said yes, and it came back almost immediately. Um... After I, after I filled in all the information. So Twitter, in, in the age of fake news and Cambridge Analytics, um, Twitter has tightened up their grip on um, who all can have a developer account. And now you need to almost apply for it along with a description of what it is you're going to do before they'll give it to you. Uh, I haven't run it compiled in this project. Yeah. Because you're running into not being able to get the Twitter development account. Ouch. Ouch. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we got here. All right. Uh, had to stop watching my Twitter feed as it has way too many updates. Oh, no. My Twitter feed? Hmm. Okay. So let me come back now to Brave Cobra's comment. Uh, should we mock up some C4 models before diving into CQRS? We'll need some consensus on the architecture. I looked at it this weekend, but there are still some inconsistencies. Oh, there's a lot of inconsistencies because we're, we're still trying to get things up to speed. We're not quite finished yet. Um, but Brave Cobra is suggesting we check out c4model.com. So... The C4 model for software architecture. I'm not familiar with this. Uh, maps of your code, abstractions, da, 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 da. core diagrams, container diagram, component diagram, code. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. Um, so, let's... um. Let's, uh, wow. All right. Meta model. Yeah. Okay. Holy cannoli. Okay. Um, context containers, components, and code. All right. Um, let's reopen the project. And let's take... We don't need level four yet. No, no, we don't. Um, so where we are right now, to make sure that that I've got everybody kind of on the same page, um, 
we've been working on, let me put this back the way that I like it, with showing someone you can open up that scroll bar. Hey, tis Arnold. Um, I think they took it a little too literally. Yeah. They did. Um, so the Twitter friends list, I'll, I'll be happy to explain what that does. Um, so let me go back over here. The, the Twitter friends list project that is out there. The idea here is doing the Twitter thing. Um, I'll write a quick explanation here real quick. Um, this is a simple web application that will um, allow you to create a private Twitter list that contains the list of friends that another Twitter account follows. Example, uh, Jeff creates a um, a private list that contains the um, that contains the list of folks, the list of Twitter users that um, that Sally follows. In this way, Jeff can uh, review that list and uh, see what Twitter looks like to Sally. Make sense? What do you think? A list that contains a list. A list of Twitter in that way can review that list. No, it's one list. Create a private list. Oh, oh. <laughs> that contains the Twitter users that Sally follows. Thank you. Thank you, Brave Cobra. Uh, commit changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. All right. So that, I think, explains, right, this is, that's the core piece to this, is being able to do this, create it, this list. And we added, there's a, um, there's a Grease Monkey script in here that will actually add a create private list link to Twitter. And I have Grease Monkey running here. So if I go to twitter.com, it create it adds this create private list link here that'll bounce off of that website for this user and create that list. Pretty neat. Pretty neat to work with Grease Monkey. We just need to finish closing the loop on this and figure out exactly what's breaking there. In that case, could you use you could use something like Hangfire to space out the follow follows at a rate of 1,000 a day so the API limits never get reached. The list will just slowly populate over time. Yes, right? So Hangfire is a background service that, that you can, right, you can set up to work appropriately. And we can set up other background services inside of ASP.NET Core to do that. Um, part, but the challenge is that we need that background service to act on behalf of a person, right? It needs to be on behalf of an, a user's account. So that user's account, that user needs to be signed in, which means I need to persist then their OAuth keys. And that's got bad news written all over it. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to do that because it, it screams security violation to be storing somebody's OAuth keys in a database. So I'm... I want to do some more thinking around that before we come back to it because that's a significant issue for us to build something that's um, secure and reliable. So... All right. Um, let's come back over to CoreWiki, and we've been working on, I'm not going to look at the issues just yet. Um, let me see here. Janescu corrected some Blazor docs today. Hey, congratulations. That's cool. Um, da, 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 da. okay. MS flow, MS flow doesn't doesn't quite do that. MS Flow is really more about pushing things around 
similar to uh, if this, then that. Uh, you don't know what else they're doing with Twitter, so you have to back off from 1,000. Yes. So that actually comes back a little bit to what, uh, to what Lane was saying around we're going to want to check the, the current number of follows that have been used today. And I don't know if we want to burn all 1,000 follows for that person, because if they use this tool, then they won't be able to add any follows on their own to their normal public watch list. So it's an, it's an interesting problem. Tomorrow, Jeff Fritz is in .NET Rocks. Yes, tomorrow, 4.30, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, uh, 8.30 p.m. UTC. All right, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at CoreWiki and working with CQRS here. We've started down this path, and actually, I'm on a different branch here. Come on, I'm, I'm, thank you. Let me jump back to our branch. Uh, get reset hard. And then get checkout. And we're going to bring new data. All right. Uh, I think we're all up to date on that, right? I haven't done anything out there. There we go. Now, uh, yes, reload everything. Thank you. Now, where we left off, we had... Um... Oh, no. Well, this is kind of where we did leave off. Um, our build wasn't completing yet. We hadn't finished getting the build running um, because the refactoring we had done into this application project still has things lined up a little bit funny. And we put together last time a um, we put together a quick PowerPoint with the, the highest level of that diagram. Um, let me go into the project here. To two, to T. It's easy for me to open it right here so you can see it. Yep, open. So this PowerPoint is here inside of CoreWiki Docs and it's in the new data uh, folder. And I have a feeling we'll end up creating more documents. But we created this high level document last time. Right now we have just our website, CoreWiki. And it currently connects to this transactional data store. And I put a red dotted line because that's where it is now doing the, all of our database interactions this way, but that's not where we want it to be. We're separating these out so that we have our reads or our queries going against some front-end cache that's optimized for the website. And our writes, or commands as they're called, will go against some sort of command handler that will write to the transactional data store and update, notify the cache that it needs updating so that it'll refresh appropriately. Um, oh, that's cool, Smap, that your scaffolding uh, problem that you reported is is coming in 2.2. Awesome. Great stuff. So this is the high-level diagram of what this is going to do. And when I, when I back off and look at the project, we have the CoreWiki application. And right now, the only page that we're trying to get working is the Create page. Here's the create page right here. So Razor template, and it's got it's got a create model that comes out, and inside that create model, which is stored here in create CSHTML CS, um, we actually create a DTO, a data transfer object, that we pass to the browser, and then we model bind back from the browser back into this page model. When, when that submit button is clicked because the, the visitors are creating an article inside of our wiki. So that's, that's the interaction that we're trying to simplify here. Um, and we're getting there. We're, we're getting really close. Um, see, our on get operation creates this new article create DTO, which is specific. This is a, a browser to server specific objects. So we've, we've put this into our models folder here in the web project. So we're just creating that. We're gonna load it up with a topic if there was one submitted because we're saying, yes, 
create a new foo page, whatever that page may be. Let's let's seed the topic name with whatever was requested. That makes sense. And then here's where we bind that property so that it's made available to our template and also is is bound. So Razor Pages will see that that's being submitted back to the page and, and it will hydrate those uh, HTML forms, uh, form fields, and turn it back into an article create DTO. This way, we keep the actions on the page completely separate from how we interact with the database. <clears throat> now, we had the on get. This is the method that, <clears throat> excuse me, pardon me. Ah. All right, need more coffee. When you actually click the submit button, this method fires on post async. And we're going to go through all this validation, all this goo to make sure that everything's correct and can be appropriately saved to the database. And at this point, we, we, this is where we kind of, where we kind of ran in, the, the train ran off the rails a little bit because we were, um, we're receiving this DTO, we're doing some of the cleanup on this, and we're figuring, we're, we're seeing that we want to refactor some of these things that are in a helpers class. And while that was okay, when we were just in, uh, while we were just in a simple Razor Pages project, and we didn't have too much to maintain, we weren't really reusing it outside of that project, and we only had one project in our solution, that was okay, but we're we're growing at this point. We're becoming more enterprisey. We're building for longer term maintenance. So this type of helper method, we need to move somewhere that makes more sense inside of the domain of our article object. So that if we create other interfaces, if we create other APIs, if if we build out extensibility like we started with our friend Miguel Castro. This is going to need to be available in those other places. So we need to start to refactor and move things out of just our web project. It's becoming enterprisey. Run away. Run. Do not stop. Go. Kidding. Uh, good morning, Brent. Great to see Chef Brent here. Uh, last night, let me tell you, I was watching... Uh, Chef Brent and Ellie Face were on, on Cooking with Heat. You gotta check out their channel. Um, they were making enchiladas last night. Oh man, was I hungry at the end of the night. Uh, thank you for the follow, Net Jess. Thanks so much. We're at 3195. Five away from 3200. Picking up speed on the follower train today. That's pretty cool. But I, I think my beard's pretty safe. I think we're not going to get to 5,000. So this is kind of where we're, we're hanging here is we're in CQRS, in, in order to implement the pattern, we shouldn't be saving this DTO object, right? We shouldn't be passing that along. This is strictly an object that lives inside of our web project. We should be creating a command that contains those properties, those concerns that we want the command to execute on and pass that along to mediator using this mediator.send syntax. Now, um, this means we need to do a little bit of work. We need to take a look at this. And right now, we have this new article command that we're creating, right? And and the feedback that I had looking at this, this is a command that contains our DTO. That feels bad because our DTO is just a few fields, right? It's these five fields. So let's just put these five fields directly into the command. Because for the purposes right now of article creation, these are the five fields that I'm concerned about. Mediator can be considered as an in-memory event bus implementation. Yes. Uh, for those of you that work with service bus, 
absolutely. This is an in-memory notification um, and queuing mechanism, right? Mediator is going to do all of that for us. And when we start to reach out and we want to scale horizontally, if we want to put those command handlers into a service application, Mediator will help us scale up so that we can communicate to those other applications. Uh, the Blizzard API has a Realm Slug property. Oh, that's cool. All right. So, digging in here a little bit. Right now, this create new article command, let me show you this, is an I request that returns a list of strings. And this was, this fits the original structure of, of the application because when it came back, after we created that article, we got some list of links that said, oh, there's some other articles out there that our visitor may want to create. So we redirected to this create articles from link page if there were some articles that were referenced that don't exist yet. Nice, but a command that returns these links, these links aren't actually used. So what I'd prefer instead of returning a rich collection of objects, I'd prefer to return some sort of a status code that says failed, succeeded, succeeded, and there's a, a, an additional step here that you need to take so that we know, hey, there's, there's links here that you can go and create. And that's where I'm... I'm looking at create new article command and thinking, I'm not sure that that behaves exactly the way that I want. Um, now, looking at the error list, we do have some other things. Yes, Brave Cobra. Um, let me, actually, Brave Cobra make, it makes exactly the point that I was running into and I was struggling with last time when we looked at code. Um, and if, if you do want to see how we got to this point, the video is on YouTube. You're welcome to check that out. I've, I've recapped a lot here to get you up to speed. But Brave Kerber's point is exactly what my challenge was. A command should not return anything except a status code. Only a query can return stuff, right? So a command should just say, right, I succeeded, I failed, or some other status code that triggers an additional action. And that's, that I think is a good practice. That I think is a great, um, a great point of using this, this uh, design pattern, this architecture pattern. So um, let's, let's peel this back a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm not an expert with Mediator. I'm learning to use this just like, just like the rest of us. So I'm gonna click into the send, um, definition here, right? So iMediator has send and it takes an i request or it takes a type of notification, which is an i notification. Now, an i notification doesn't actually have any properties here. <coughs> so is i notification my command and an i request? Right, because a request has something that it returns, and I request our query. So I think that's the difference between our two here. I think. Um, so what I'd like to do, um, so the notification doesn't return anything, but I wanna return almost a status code. So this is telling me that I, I'm not going to return it. I'm not going to. I'm going to get a cancellation token, right? And the cancellation token has all these things that are going on, and they, right. Um, I'm not really canceling here, so I don't think I want to use the cancellation token coming out of this. Um, so how do I get status of that command coming out? Hmm. Um, let's go take a look at the mediator documentation. 
Let's put a question mark in front of that so we do the search. Uh huh. And here's actually our friend Steve Smith writing about it, but this is Jimmy Bogard um, writing about Mediator. Uh, give me a wiki page here. Show me. Right, service factory, add all types of. Yep, structure map, autofac. Basics, request response messages dispatched to a single handler, notification messages dispatched to multiple handlers. How to get a notification that a system threading tasks has completed. Um... <clears throat> right. So I would be pa publishing that notification back. So I don't think that's what we want. Right, so we're going to have a, a request and it sends back a response. So maybe our, we are publishing a request so that we can get back a status code. Um, hum, 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 hum. Request returns a value. Request does not return a value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where unit represents a terminal or ignite re or ignored return type. Okay. Requests without return values. Yeah. So we do have a return value, and that's a request of type T, because we're going to return some sort of a status. You only need to know whether the command has been received, not whether it was completed successfully. You only do that by querying for it afterwards with something like continue with. Oh, okay, so we do have a continue with, huh? Let's go back to the code. Um, so, oh, we would do that on the task. Ah, yes, 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 okay. So we would do a dot send and then a continue with to inspect and, and see the results of that. Aha. Okay. Now I'm now I'm feeling you. Now we're getting somewhere. Thank you, Brave Cobra. All right. So before I start ripping this apart, I just want to take a look over here and make sure. Right, core wiki in the create CSHTML. That's where that's where I'm doing some damage right now. Right, I've got the hood up and we're throwing wrenches. Um, and I, this is the only project that it looks like is failing to build. I thought we saw something around. Yeah. Core wiki application could not be loaded. Huh? Try that again. Give me a rebuild. Show me the money. Show me the money. All right. Um, yeah, application DLL could not be found. Well, we'll see if there's something. There it is. So I was down in this article helpers last time. Yeah, we've got some uh, got some adjustments we need to make here. This should probably be like that. And I think this was supposed to be like this. And that was easy. So we had moved some things around so that helpers task was pointed at the wrong files. So now we have some issues in our test project. Where does Fritz come from? Oh, it's it's German, southern part of Germany. Um, Black Forest region is, I understand, where we're from. Hey, crows, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be for you. Um, let me go back to the error list. So create tests. Uh, this is pointed to, our, our unit tests are pointed to something that doesn't quite work. Okay, so this was the create tests, uh, um, not facade, oh my gosh. Th this was the create test class that Ashley wrote. And um, we're running into an issue here where the create model, right? So create model is down here. 
I'm sorry, is over here. Um, and it has a different structure now. It takes in an I mediator and an I article repository, where previously it only took in an article, uh, an article repository. We were able to mock that out. So this. Uh, da, da, da. Create model does not contain an on get async. Yes, it does. Sure, it does. Ah, uh, we changed it to on get. Well, that'll break a few things, won't it? And I don't need to await those anymore. That fixes that. I can get rid of this one and get rid of that. Clean that one up, remove this, closer. This doesn't need to be async anymore, so I can get rid of this, and we can convert that to a void. Same deal here. And one more time, and that brings us to here where mediator is being used. On the, uh, well, this is all on gets. So I can actually pass null into this. And clock is out. And I think that just did it. Uh, oh, we can change that one. Sure, I'll take care of that. All right, and now our test. What? Um. Right, should be good there. Where's my test window? Test, test, test. Here it is. I'm going to put this at the bottom here so we can keep an eye on our tests. Uh huh. Now, um, it looks like we're still not building. What is get existing article? Where'd that go? Yeah. Returns. has the wrong return type. Oh, so we should be, get article by slug should be returning a task of type article. Um, so let's just say uh, task dot from results, right, I'm just cheating here. Bazinga. Cannot be inferred from its usage. You stink because I dropped that. Better, is that better? What do we think? There's the music again, all right. So all my reds are gone here. If I look at my error list, let's try to build one more time. So the test, here we go. Create model does not contain a definition for slug to topic, right. So we moved this. No, it's right there. Okay, cool, that did get cleaned up. All right, so now we're just down to fixing what's in that create page. Test titles are referring to the old methods. Um, yes, there are some here that are referring to the old methods and we're gonna end up, we're gonna end up seeing a world of hurt as we move those around. Um, that's why they're there, that's why we're we're refactoring mercilessly, right? As we move those into more domain appropriate places, we'll change those tests so that they're pointing to those new places. The methods are still the same, so they should continue to work. But uh, point well taken there, uh, little, little foot. Welcome, little foot. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go back over to my create page and I'm gonna, really, really? You, you, you put the results side by side there, you make me sad. All right, I think that works. So now, let's change, um, I'm gonna change create new article command. I wanna start there, where this is receiving the, the article create DTO 
which is was moved as part of the last pull request into the core wiki application. I do not like this here, but I do like these. So I'm going to I'm going to cut these right out. You're out. And we're going to go over to the create new article command and instead of having this DTO here, I'm going to paste in those properties. And uh, I'm going to make these private sets. Actually, I don't even need to make them private set, do I? I can just delete. Right? I can just do that. And C Sharp will implicitly make that a private set. Cool. Um, now I need to do the, a little bit of left-right monkey coding. Right? Um, because I'm not receiving that. Instead, I'm receiving a topic, the content, a GUID with the author ID, a string with the author name, and finally a string with the slug. String with the slug feels weird at the end when the topic is at the beginning. I'm going to move it up there. So now I can, oh, that's better. I go with two character tabs, two space tabs. That way it, uh, that way it, it, I can fit more code on screen at the same time. Uh, RH Sumner, what extension is that that annotates the class members with all that metadata? That's not actually not an extension. This is, this is called code lens. And um, in Visual Studio, if you use professional or enterprise, this comes out of the box for all of your .NET projects. Um, and it's also in every version of Visual Studio Code. Uh, why not just an object initializer? If I use an object initializer, then these values can be set somewhere else outside of my command. If I make it part of the constructor, the command will be created and sent along. And these objects will um, these objects will will not be able to be modified later on. So it's a way for me to to protect the object from changes, right? Uh, so immutable, useful for event sourcing. Ex oh man, spoiler alert from Ashley. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely someplace that we could end up and it would be completely overkill not good um, but for the purposes of learning which is really why we're building this um, I would be okay with trying that out all right so now it's it's immutable right I've got these immutable strings here they can't be modified we're passing them in they're only created at constructor time and I'm not I don't want to return that so I'm just going to make this an I request <clears throat> taking pages out of functional uh, programming yes I still hope they make a code lens API um, I need to follow up on that for you Smab. I'm Um, enterprise preview expiring for, I need to take a look at that. I will get an answer for you on that. Code lens API. I thought, I thought I saw because there are people extending, uh, code lens, how to extend code lens from 2014, da, da, da. not not currently extensible, but that's in 2014, but I think as of 2017, I thought I saw folks are now doing it. Uh, we'd like to dive further into specific needs in 2017 from, this is Mark Wilson Thomas. Mark Wilson Thomas, if you ever have a chance to talk to Mark or hear him give a presentation about the Visual Studio 
IDE, tremendous, tremendous uh, program manager, knows his way inside and out of all the features of Visual Studio. Great guy. Um, and uh, if if Mark is on this and he's he's digging into it, I have no doubt that it'll be coming soon. Um, but I know you can modify code lens in Visual Studio Code. So if you're developing with ASP.NET Core and you use Visual Studio Code, you will get code lens for free there. Um, VS Code namespace. I could have sworn it was in here. There you go. Register code lens provider. So you can you can extend code lens in Visual Studio Code right now. And like we saw from that comment from, from Mark, it looks like they're looking at it for full Visual Studio. Um, take this from someone on stream who made an extension that shows the types of VARs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, that looks like a really neat item. Uh, C-sharp VAR type. Yes. I need to look at that. Um, sorry, my house was flooded last night. I didn't have a chance to look at your article. We'll get to it. We will get to it, I promise you. Um... All right, so there were some comments here about the this statements. Yeah, I can get rid of the thises, sure. I like to be explicit when I write those, but that's fine. Um, all right, so this is an I request now. Now if I go back, um, actually, so that article DTO object over here, that is right there. Say goodnight, Gracie. Okay. Um... I need that sound effect, that explosion, when whenever I delete code. Like, that's almost like a power mode thing. How did you avoid the storm, Brent? Incon okay, so I live right near a very large shopping mall called the King of Prussia Mall. It's very well known. Um, and the mall flooded out. <laughs> there were... Um, yeah, there were <laughs> there was a good amount of water on the throughout the whole first floor of the shopping mall. It's the largest mall on either coast of the United States. Uh, actually, it's the largest shopping only mall in the world uh, because all these other shopping malls now have amusement parks and hotels and other things attached to them. Why is Code Lens a pro feature but free in Visual Studio Code? I can't answer that question. I don't know. I wasn't part of that. I wasn't part of that discussion, that that business decision. It's I kind of agree standby reloading doesn't make sense when you when you look at the scope of things. There aren't many of the features I would be using lady but co co code lens saves a bit of time. Yes it does. So, all right. Um so we now have the this command so now if I go back to my create page, now now this gets even even a little bit more broken here. Um, so we're doing some model state work here, and right, we're taking validation of our create. We've put it here, and that feels weird. Um, right, I think isn't there a validation a validation step that we can put in? Isn't validation something we can drop into Mediator? I thought. I thought. Mediator, wiki. Right. No. Yeah, when do we do validation? Is it done inside the command? Or is it done by the domain object after it's been triggered? Because I want to do the I want to do that first level validation before I fire the command. It's a NuGet package extension. Oh, for fluent validation. All right. Um, so let's do this. This needs to be so descriptive. That that commenter there is so nice. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. So... Article .author ID. So this is the DTO object. I don't want that anymore. I want to start creating my command. Um, so let's do this. 
uh, let's say command equals new, create new article command. Okay. Right, so now here we go. The topic, well, the topic is article dot topic. The slug is, right, we've already calculated that up higher on the page and we're gonna need to move that. The content comes out of article dot content. Um, the GUID is uh, ta -da, this. And the author name is that. Now we can get rid of this. Now if I really wanted to be explicit, I could, um, you know what, let's show that syntax. I could do this, I could say topic. And I know some folks don't like this approach, but for the purposes of learning the various features that are available here to us, I don't think it's too bad um, to actually show the, the name value syntax, right? So in creating that command, if I break it out like this, it looks a little bit cleaner. And coming back to what somebody was saying, saying earlier about using, um, about using an object initializer, this looks a little bit more like object and initializer. Oh yeah, uh, good point, Ashley. Because I'm using the parameter names here, I can actually put these out of order, right? I can put these in alphabetic order if I liked, right? I'm not running Karnak. Or if I am, it, right? I want you down there. Thank you. Right, so I'm using alt tab. Uh, no, I wanna move that one down there, this here. Alt up and down will move those lines for you in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And I've put these in whatever order I like, and I can do that because I'm using the parameter name to define this. So the, so I, I like being a little bit more explicit about what it is that I'm building in the command. Um, now I don't need to do this here. I can just pass in command. Cool. Um, so I'm awaiting that, right? Even, right, send is, right, it runs it, returns a task, okay? So now to, I forget who mentioned earlier about the continue with, I think it was Brave Cobra. Um, I can now actually, almost, I can now do continue with, and then, I've now got an action based on that task of the unit that was um, that was completed. Um, is that Niamiuk? Uh, let me know how to pronounce your handle. I want to make sure that I that I address you properly. For the validation, would you not want to create some sort of pipeline where you have a validation handler prior to actually handling of the command? Yes. Yes. Right now, I'm just trying to get I'm trying to get rid of my red my errors at this point. But that's exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for is is a validation pipeline somewhere to centralize that validation for some of these things that are going on up here. Right, these things on these 15 lines around. Well, is this le legit or is it just fantasy? Uh, I forget the rest of. Okay. I don't think the continue with would mean that the handler has finished running, running. Only that mediator has received the command. Um, does it? Uh, let's come back over here. Let's take a look at the documentation. To do, to do, do. Yes. Okay. Request types. Publishing for notifications. Create a, a notification message. Create zero more handlers for your notification. So I would do I need to create a notification handler that it has been received? Um, Mr. Byte TV. The more I work with methods and constructors with long lists of parameters, especially parameters with the same type, the more I prefer named parameters to help be explicit about what parameters being set to avoid pugs 
avoid bugs with parameters in the wrong order. That's a great point there, Mr. Byte TV. Thank you for bringing that up. That when you do get into this collection here, it it certainly does feel like we should use um, the named parameter syntax so it becomes a little bit clearer. Um, another another feature that I like to use is to wrap these up into some sort of a facade object so that we are we are creating, right? We create that object that has, here's all my parameters for this and that we're injecting in. Now, given that this create new article command really is itself a facade, right? It is, it's something that we're going to unwrap inside of Mediator at the other end to go and take action based on this content. It feels weird to pass an object in here that we're just going to unwrap from the object that we're unwrapping. It becomes then like like Russian nested dolls, right? Going from really big to small and small and smaller until finally we get to our primitives. There we go. Comps for food. Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Yes. I can't wait to see that Bohemian Rhapsody movie coming out. That looks... As, as a Queen fan from the 80s... Um, I'm interested to see what that does. The return task will not be scheduled for execution until the current task has completed, whether it completes due to running to completion successfully folding due to an unhandled exception or exiting out early due to being canceled. Yes, the question is when it's been sent here, the task that is returned from send, is that task that it has received the command and put it on on the, in this case, in-memory bus, or is it that the, um, is it that the task has completed processing, the command has completed processing, and we're receiving a notification that the command has completed. So what is the task completion communicating? If you're awaiting, you'll get the result. The, right, the result of which one? Is it the result of being added, be, the command being added, or the command executing? Which one? Which part of the process is it? Uh, switch my laptop so I can watch low latency and actually be able to type and keep up. Okay. When would it be ideal to introduce auto mapper? I think we can do that in, in the next show or two here. Maybe even next, not next week. Next week's a bad idea. Next week I have, uh, oh my gosh. Um, I'm having surgery next week, so I will not be broadcasting next week. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to be broadcasting. Definitely not on Tuesday. Maybe on Friday or Saturday. Depends on how I feel. Depends on how ugly this mug looks. We'll see. Um, from the docs. Oh, thank you, Brave Cobra, for looking this up. Send publish our async from the med iMediator side with corresponding sync and async based interfaces. Based class for response, request, response, notification handlers. Your handlers can use the async await keywords as long as the work is awaitable. So if you await, you will get a response. Ah, okay. So it's that the work has completed. All right. So at this point, the work has completed. Yeah, when the target task completes. Okay. So at this point, it has completed that. So now I can go and say, well, are there article links that we need to create? Now, if we look at that page, uh, that page, find it, Jeff. Here we go. So this does article helpers get articles to create based on an article. Well, I don't know if I want to pass in the entire article. You switch to a different app to be able to watch properly. Oh, um, I have I have really good luck watching Twitch using the Twitch desktop application. Um, that works really well for me. Get articles to create takes in an article and the article repository. Oh, I don't like the looks of this. I don't like the looks of this at all. And now I sound like Liam Neeson. 
Um, where are we going here? Uh, let's see, let's see. So, getting articles to create find wiki article links. So this is actually analyzing the content of the article that you requested. Um, okay. Turns them into slugs and then says, is that topic available? I'm Batman. No, that's different Batman. I have a very specific set of skills. Oh, are you referring, of course, to this? But what I do have. What do you have? Are a very particular set of skills. I do, in web skills development. I've acquired over a very long career. Very long career. I did the whole dot com thing and it was terrible. Um, if we rename article helpers to an article application service, it started to make more sense. <laughs> oh, I like that smap. I have a very generic set of skills. Skills that nobody really wants. I know how to bag groceries. I'm very good at bagging groceries. Um, the repo should be encapsulated in that article application service. I don't like that the repository is here. Can we start there? I don't like that this get list of articles to create is hitting the rep the repository for each one of these to say, are all these topics available? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this we need to refactor. Let's... <clears throat> Let's throw a big fat to do on this. Because I I don't want to get too distracted here. I want to get it working. Get our tests happening again. And then go back to refactoring mercilessly. Oh yes. Um refactor this. And and um I like what you're saying there, Brave Cobra. Uh into an article application service. So, you absolutely need to do that. What I do have are a very particular set of skills that make me a full-stack developer. And a terrible imitation of Liam Neeson. We need a better name, though. Name this thing more gooder. No, that's bad English, and I... <laughs> To do name this thing okay um <laughs> basically done at that point done the first page all right um uh, but we are pretty close here um do, 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 do. so this is getting the links to create and it's passing in that domain article and let me go look at that again. What I don't like about this method is we're passing in the full domain object for the article. And I think all we're doing is looking at the content. And this article.id, why are we passing in that ID? That feels weird. And we're replacing this. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. This is only if we're... And we're not coming in from this side. Okay. Why not just move the method into the article service? Yes. This is not updating the content of the other articles. Right? See, it doesn't actually update it. it it's updating the content in the article that you're creating. Which feels weird. I just want the list of articles to create... And right, it, it's going and checking to see if it's available in the database. So I kind of agree. We need this inside of an article service, but I don't have an article service yet. Um, I don't have services yet. Should be part of the handler then. Mm, if it's part of the handler, the, the command handler, then we're returning data from it, and I don't want to return data from that command. I want this to be a query. So this should be a query that we fire. 
Ah. Right? Am I what do we think? Create another query. Yes. Yes. All right, so let's do that. Let's create a query. And so for the on get right, we're not actually querying anything here. Um, but I'm going to go down to our application. And I'm right, I'm not even mm, Okay, because we've separated these out. All right, we have commands. Create new article, command, create new article, handler. And I think I even want to move the handler into another folder. Let's create a query here. Create new article query that returns create article view models. Mm. Let's public, um, pub, public class. Um, Right, this is, we want to get articles to create from article. And this is, a, this is an I request, right? And what's it, what's it returning? It's going to return, what's it going to return? It's gonna return with its very particular set of skills. It's gonna return a list of type string. I don't want to return a list of type string that's too complicated. I want something a little bit smaller. Let's just return an array of strings because I don't really care about modifying and searching through it. Just return that array so that we can do something with it. Get articles to create from articles. So now I need, what do I need? I need a thing. Don't I need to implement something here? Right. You're running into the same things I ran into this weekend. Too much to change it once to get it right. Yes, Brave Cobra. Uh, I feel like we do get distracted, right? Oh, let's go do this other thing. Oh, let's go do this other thing. Um, so let's do this. Uh, no, don't generate the overrides. Bad idea. Move the type. Thank you. Um, let's get rid of that for right now. I don't need to think about that, right? Let's... Let's, I'm going to, I'm going to run with a little bit with what Ashley's saying there. For right now, I'm going to just make sure that this is always, I'm going to just disable that functionality. Um, this is never going to be returned. So I don't really care about, I'm never going to care about that. So let's just get that done. Uh, what else? What don't you like here? Not all code paths return a value. They do. Oops. There we go. All right. Should work. Mm. Okay. Right. All my tests still work. Going. Going. Come on. Oh, man. No. What do we got here? Um, base article DTO. Oh, we got rid of this thing. Slug to topic. Um, yeah, we got rid of this. Okay. Next error. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, and zero references. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Delete the code. Everybody loves it when you delete the code. Moving on. Um, all right, so two in application here. The type cannot be used as parameter T request in the generic type or method, blah, blah, blah. There's no implicit conversion from create new article command to list string. Um, right, because this doesn't return a type now because we changed it. Which means that this has a slightly different interface. Let's see here. There's all that stuff. You know what? I'm just going to grab this signature. And... Replace. Okay, try article equals new article. 
Why don't you like that? Oh my gosh, what happened? Modifier public is not... Oh. <laughs> Get rid of that. All right. Um, request. Request has... I don't have a new article. I just have topic. Because we got rid of the new article object. Because it felt silly to unwrap something just to rewrap it in something else. There we go. All right. Do it. Create article. Article. Create article and history. And we're passing in... This is a new domain article. Now, why doesn't it... The await operator can only be used in async. Do it. Uh, I'm not returning anything. This goes away because I'm not doing that here. Right? Show me the money. Show me the money. Here we go. Um, there is that wrapper thingy. Deleted that in my branch. Okay. Um, hey, Gareth Hubble. Good to see you. Uh, Waddell. If I want to become a .NET developer, would I have to learn C Sharp first? Um, so there, there are several .NET languages. C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET. Your choice. Um, C, uh, C Sharp is the dominant language of the three. Those are the three languages that Microsoft supports. There are other languages. Yeah, yeah. There are other, are other languages outside of those three that Microsoft supports that do work with .NET. There's COBOL. There's ways to work with um, Python with it. But primarily you see those three languages being used. Um, C Sharp is, is by like a factor of 10 the... Uh, the dominant language in .NET. The next language is VB, and then VB by a factor of 10 is more popular than F Sharp. But F Sharp is picking up a lot of, a lot of folks that are using it. <laughs> Gareth's making a very good point here. PHP can be used also. There's a great project called Peach Pie that's available that will allow you to take your PHP code, compile it into dot with using the .NET compilers and a little bit of set up inside of an ASP.NET project and your PHP code will run and be compiled into .NET. It's a really neat project um, and we're going to look at PeachPy on stream here at some point because I'm going to convert my WordPress blog to run on .NET using PeachPy. But very good point there, Gareth. Thanks for chiming in with that. Hanselman did do a post on it. Yes. Yes, yes. But he hasn't actually like he doesn't have a video showing you how to do it. Um, okay, I, th I think we were pretty close. I think we had one or two errors left. Um, article create DTO could not be found. Yes, because we, we nuked. Wait a sec. Create article view model. I thought... Huh? Wait a sec. Hold, hold the phone. Create new article command. Ah, create article view model. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, where is that? This, goodbye. Goodbye! Nice knowing you. A river there, che. Where's that bomb? There we go. No more code. No more error. Um, create new article... Command handler, not all code paths return a value. Uh, it shouldn't. I request handler create new article command. Right? And create new article command is an I request. It's not returning anything. So... Right? This should be using... It's returning a unit of work. Yeah. Um, what am I doing wrong there? That's a notification handler. String handle. Right. Protected override task. I don't... I shouldn't have that. There we go. Much better. 
Is there any more errors that we need to... Does that implement... <sighs> it, it shouldn't, should it? Um... <laughs> Protected override. Is it? Is that what I'm doing wrong here? No, it shouldn't be an override. This is an interface. Async request handler one way. No, I'm implementing... It should be... I request... Passing in a type string. No. No, it's an I request that returns a type string. I don't want to return a type. So I should be just, right, this create new handler command. Right, I'm passing that in. That's the only thing coming in. But it wants a unit returned. So what do I return? Um, request types. Request does not return a value. I request inherence. I request of unit where unit represents a terminal or ignored return type. So I've got to return something? You're telling me? That feels weird. That feels weird. Async request handler. In which case, we go like that and get rid of this. Still doesn't like it. Uh, handle async request handler, create new article command, handle, create new article command, request and cancellation token. Got that. Much better. So why isn't it the interface? Right? Publishing, dispatch, I request handler, ping, returning a type pong. Yeah. That's not clear to me when I'm doing that I request handler. Inherit this and return whatever that unit is. Those without, I request handler of type T, implement this and you will return task of type unit. It's a wrapper to work around the unit of work. You can get rid of the unit, specifically return unit.value in handlers by using async request handler. Other places you'll ever encounter the, uh, encounter the unit that returns task of type unit and calling handler, handlers without mediator in tests. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So request handler, I request handler, I request handler. Migration guide, just to summarize. Um, <laughs> I got rid of the async request handler type of T, returning a unit, because it doesn't really wasn't doing anything after consolidation, a redundant base class. Okay. So I guess we'll do it this way. Fun by me. Okay. Um, so how many more errors do we have? Create model does not contain a definition for slug to topic. Right because we moved it. So where is slug to topic now? It is. <coughs> it's on the domain article. No. Let's do core.domain article. Bazinga. I boomed it. Did we get it? Do we have it? No. 
Um, this is create new article query. I'm not doing a query when we create a new article at this point. Because, right, so reflecting back, we were doing a query up here to say, well, does this topic actually exist? And if it does, give it a blank topic. I would suggest that create new article query and just get article are the same thing. So I'm going to nuke this query. And I'm going to nuke the query handler. Because they do pretty much the same thing as what we're going to do in the details page when we get an article. Uh, M. Sapiogen. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hello. Good morning. Or is that... Or is that... You're finishing with this CQRS? The first pass. <gasps> Test ran. Test ran. Look at that. All that we have left is this silly JavaScript thing that it doesn't like. And I'm going to fix that just so I can make it go away. Go away. Shoo. Rebuild. Make that go away. We're not, we're not going to completely finish, but we're going to finish with this first page. And then we'll have a template that we can go through and start mercilessly refactoring in some other places. Tests are running. I thought I just fixed that. Expected triple equals. Ah, there it goes. Goodbye. All right. Well, we've got left in the create tests now. So this was the test that, that Ashley gave us so that we can make sure that we're creating and still returning our DTO object. Almost there. Once we get this fixed, just need this in order to complete the refactoring. It's like golf. Just a little bit more code there. Well, that's right, Skip. I think Jeff's almost got it. Just a little bit of, of fixing. Get rid of those red X's. And we're in great shape for the commit. Absolutely, Steve. So let's see what he can do now. All right, here we go. Um, should redirect to an article edit page. So get an article existing slug. Um, the redirect result result. Ah. So this is this is Ashley actually testing what I just nuked. <laughs> um, because what this is saying. <coughs> this is saying. If you're trying to create a page that already exists, redirect over to the edit page. And I completely nuked that functionality. So, um, oh, Devin, great quote. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Absolutely. I love that movie. That's from Dodgeball. So much fun. Um, it needs to be testing against the command now. Mm. We're actually not doing any post in your tests here, Ashley. So I think you're actually in a good in a good place because these tests are all against the on get. So we're not testing the post with the command yet. These are great tests to make sure that we are properly handling the get and still providing that same edit functionality. So let's do this. Let's start building that query to get an article based on slug. Because that same thing we're going to use both in our details page and in this first part of the edit page to see if we actually need to present that article. ESPN8, The Ocho. It's a great channel. It should exist. I, I could see a place for it. Sure. Sure. They've already got eight more than eight channels when you think about ESPN News, ESPN2, ESPNU for all the college sports. Um, but they also manage a bunch of the other college sports channels. We'd love to start using live unit testing in Visual Studio, using Community at the moment, though, and not sure on the licensing of the Enterprise Preview. Yeah, it is safe for you to use for code you might be deploying for the previews, and you can actually put those side by side. There's an ESPN F1, yeah. 
There's an ESPN goal line for for college football. It's crazy the amount of stuff they have. Let's create another query here um, and get articles to create from article. This is that other piece for to finish that fu other functionality, but I want to fix my tests here. So let's create another class and let's just call it get article. I mean, I'm getting an article, right? It's an I request. What happened there? Um, and um, I'm going to return. I thought it was. Hang on. Our command is just an I request. Okay. So this is an I request that's going to return a core dot domain dot article. I'm going to bring that Chalupa back. See what I did there? See what I did there, Brent? I'm I'm already referencing Chalupas. Um, all right. So this is going to. I don't need to specify the payload. Uh, let's create a constructor here. And we're going to receive, I want to receive the, is it, do I want to receive the ID or the, I want to receive the slug that I'm fetching, right? Because in my repository, da, 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 um, <laughs> get article by slug. That's what I want. The, um, slug equals slug. Uh, create a read-only property, done, and uh, move that out. Get out of here. Thank you. All right. Um, so there we are. Get article. Now I need a handler to go with that. Oh, there's validation. Validation classes lives here. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> live unit test is enterprise only and crunch as an alternative and crunch is pretty good um, I'm not sure what the licensing is on that um, it, it used to be open source and free but they've taken it uh, into a commercial product and he's done a great job with it it's really a fantastic product um, there's also uh, mighty moose stopped development a long time ago but it did very much the same thing um, so there's my commands, and yeah, still having the handlers in the same file. Yeah, let's uh, let's build this handler. So let's call this a uh, get article handler. And uh, right, this is a async. Let's make this an I request handler, right? The request that we are receiving is a uh, a get article. And our response that we're receiving. Now, why doesn't it automatically fill that out? Why doesn't it just know that this is what I'm returning? You know? Um, it's a core domain article. Article? Um, all right. So now we need to implement some methods. Bazinga. All right. So handle article request cancellation token. Let's move this into its own type. Fantastic. Now, uh, <laughs> this actually receives the iArticle repository. So I'm going to need to do the same deal here. iArticle repository. Fix the E. And we'll just call it something like that. Uh, give me my using statement. Thank you all. Um, repository equals that. Save this off. Thank you. And now we actually need to, uh, right, we need to implement the method, right? Now, why isn't I request handler, not an I request? I did this wrong. I've gone too far. Get articles to create from article. Yeah, I, I'm in the wrong file. Oh, I feel terrible. Get rid of this. 
wrong file. Get article handler. Here we go. There's my handle. All right. Now I need to receive, let's try that again. I article repository and we'll call this repository. Control dot, get my using statement. This repository equals that. Read only property, get rid of the, this. All right. Handle the request and we are returning that type of article. So this should be, right, I should, this should be as easy as marking this first off as async. And, um, right, I should be able to say return repository get article by slug and pass in request dot slug. Right, and that is a waitable. I could just do it like that, right? I've done much stupider things in my day. Yeah, haven't we all? All right, so now I have the ability to get this and return, and I'm, I've pushed everything to fetch my article out over here. So now, if I go back to create, For the on get, instead of doing this, right, I'm receiving a slug. Um, <laughs> why is accessing the repository done with async await? Why is it not done with async await? <clears throat> um, let me go back to that handler. Not that one. Let's get rid of some of these others. Um, <coughs> by returning that task directly, the async that's, that's going to happen on this will actually bubble up to here. And inside of here is where that async will be done. So now I can make this, right, async task, which is going to break all that stuff in those other places. Um, get those four references. Um, yeah, all of these places I'm going to want to change Let's do let's do an F2 and make this one get async. Now, um, so now if we create, uh, if we make this a request and it's a new get article. Yes. Okay. The slug we're passing in is slug. And we only want to do that really if slug is, uh, if not string is null or empty slug, then we're doing that. Otherwise, article equals uh, new. Um, <laughs> where'd it go? Yeah, equals new article create DTO. And the topic equals uh, slug to topic slug. And that's only if the string is null or empty. Otherwise, we're going to get the request, which is going to return us a full domain object. If it, if it, has, if it actually exists. Yes, I am going to need to add the async await. You're right. Um, so if this re, uh, oop, I need to put it on the um, var result equals uh, what is it? Where's mediator? Is it publish or send? No, it's send because I'm going to receive a response. So we're going to send the request. What about that cancellation token? What did we do with it before down here? 
Yeah, we just did a send. That's fine. And yep, yeah, now we'll do the await. So this will be, it'll be either an article object or it will be null because my repository for the get article by slug is a single or default. And if it's default, if it comes out and it's null, this article to domain, that'll actually choke. We should update this. Um, it's not just... Um, if it is null, then we want to return null, otherwise that. Thank you for the follow, Mad Bones 41 and Littlefoot. I forgot to call Littlefoot and NetJess and Lemon Android. Thanks so much for all the follows. We are three follows away from 3,200. Oh, baby. Um, so if this is null, right? Um, I feel like I'm going to end up doing this same thing here. If results equals null, I'm doing this exact same thing. Um, otherwise, um, article equals, no, wait a sec. If it does exist, we're doing the redirect. Uh, do, 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 do. return redirect to URL, redirect to... What did the test say we was looking for? Yeah, it's looking for a redirect. <laughs> and we're going to th that page. All right. Um, yeah, let's do that. I know I'm kind of cheating here a little bit, but eh. go there. And it's not, I need to put that. Now existing article slug. Just take that and turn it into that. All right. What do we think? It's running tests. It's running tests. Come on. Hmm. It didn't even get into this. Oh, we didn't put the async and awaits in here again. Uh, oh, wait. Which means this needs to be an async task. Cool. Um, where's the other one? On get async. This needs to be a weighted, which means this needs to be an async task. Come on. All right. Getting closer. Should return page result with null article. Should return. Redirect to article edit page. Oh, now I've broken everything. Uh, <laughs> that has topic with null content. All right, hang on. So it's sending this. Oh, you know what? Mediator's null in these tests. I need to set up what it responds with. Um, let me let me go back to the chat room. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Niami UK, would ever, what's everyone's thoughts on adding the suffix async to all the async methods? Most of the methods are async these days, and tooling makes return types clear. Does it feel a bit much or meh? It does. Um, however, it's a good practice that folks recommend. Um, so I want to show the, the good practice. You're right, it does show and kind of breaks you a little bit when it doesn't. It is a bit more like Hungarian notation, if you remember that. Senator Chess 1, I'm writing in C sharp. Yep, Avina has that correct. Um, missed an await in one of those tests. Did I? 
a weight on that. Oh. You're right. Now that one should work. A weight. Oh, this needs to be an async task. And, and it's still broken because I have a uh, mediator in here. What's the advantage of using C sharp rather than Java? Oh, I need one up here. You're right. Um, C sharp works with works with .NET. Java does not. Um, Java is built and supported by the folks at Oracle. Um, and my understanding is that they've turned it primarily over to the community. Um, the, the Oracle folks have gotten, they, they've got their own practices around licensing of Java that, uh, where Java was very open source in the, in the next year or so, Oracle's practices around licensing of Java are changing significantly. You're going to want to check into that and it may affect how you develop with Java. Oracle just concluded a major lawsuit against Google that they lost around the use of Java as the primary language for Android development. So developing with Java for Android, it, it's a pretty good experience. Um, and you can use Java in a bunch of different places as well. Conversely, C Sharp is, main, is written, built, maintained, and continuously innovated on by a dedicated languages team at Microsoft. It is now completely open source. It has an industry standard, an ISO standard that goes along with it. I think Java may as well. Um, but C Sharp works in all kinds of places. Um, cloud, works on IoT devices, works on desktops, servers, all those places that Java does. And with the Xamarin framework, you can use C Sharp to build for Android. You can also use C-sharp to build for iOS. So there's a lot of different places that you can use C-sharp, and they're continuing to innovate on that, introducing new features every three to six months. Um, very, very, uh, one of many lawsuits, yes. Um, they're very, I don't want to say they're aggressive, but they're very active in the development of C-sharp development. Um, so, uh, okay. Oh, you're welcome, Senator Chess. Uh, well, so here's the thing. I'm, I actually am on the .NET team for Microsoft. I'm part of the community community team, um, showing and educating and bringing to customers and other developers um, answers just like that one so that, so that you know what you need to in order to make an educated decision. If you choose to use C Sharp, great. If you want to use Java and that gets the job done for you, that's great too. I'm. I want to make sure that everybody is productive as a developer. So. Yeah. Um. I like Ace Flameseer's answer. Uh, C Sharp is much more chill. It's. It's so chill. Okay. Hey. It's like. It's like finding a treasure. Um. Hey, there's our friend Pixel Logic Dev. P Pixel Logic Dev. I gotta tell you, our friends here in the chat room when we started today wanted to wanted to call out and commend you on on your um, stream over the weekend. They really enjoyed it. Um, great job! So thank you so much for that. Um, they were they were absolutely applauding you about how great that was. So thanks so much for hosting that. Um, let's see if we can fix these couple of tests here and wrap up where uh, wrap up our changes for today. Um, so what we're running into is right now I'm injecting, where is it? Where we're creating the page. Here it is. For the mediator, I'm injecting null at this point, and that's not going to work. I'm going to need to create a mock mediator to pass in there. Um, so create tests. I, these mocks are being created and they, they just kind of go away later. I think I'm going to need to create a private, uh, yeah, read only, um, I, no, it's going to be a mock mediator because we're going to need to set it up a little bit. Hmm. That's fine, but it's right here, right before this one. 
So if we have a um, mock mediator equals a uh, new mock I mediator, right? Do I have that right? Yeah, all right. So now I can create that. Cool. <clears throat> Here is your guide. Really? Jimmy's got a guide for us? I have a request handler. Handler test conditional calls. Never mocked the mediator. Uh, new mock. I mediator. New test result blarg. New nested mediator, fake mediator dot object, mediator dot send, new test. Why do you need two mediators? Why do you need, write a mediator on top of it? Hmm. Let's move this over here and take a look at these side by side. So I've got my new mock mediator, okay. I'm gonna set up some sort of a fake result and then I'm gonna need to set up that mediator that's going to return that other object that's re uh, handling this. All right. So let's go down into, this is testing the command query response though, right? Yes, the, this is testing the query response that's happening in our create page doo, 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 here, right? So when we get, right, we test to see if that, if they're requesting a page that already exists and route appropriately. So should return page result with null article when it's a null, an empty or null slug. So nothing exists. So before this on get async, and I also can't do this create model yet. Because I need to pass in my nested mediator that we see here. Feels bad, man. So let's take this. And the system under test is it read only. I'm going to need to nuke that. So I'm going to take this. Let's go to our first test here. Okay, so my result is actually, is null in this case, right? This is the lookup result. Mm. Okay, and, right, let's make that, you can't, I have to make that an object. That's fine. All right, um, and then I need to create a, a real mediator. Right, and this is a new nested mediator, right? That was a thing? No, this isn't a thing. Where do we get nested mediator? Right, nested mediator, this, where does that come from? What happens if we pass in mock I mediator it seems older mediator three stuff. Uh -huh. All right. So following that through then, if we say mock mediator uh, setup, so we're gonna set up a send, right? So that's gonna be M such that M dot send, right? It is any right and uh, I don't care what the request is right uh, I request yeah um, and to that send returns a task of type response <clears throat> hmm. the arguments cannot be inferred from the usage um, whatever I request it is any I request. I think I need to put a doodad there, right? Yeah, okay. 
Now why doesn't it like that? Whatever, go away. Shoo. Still doesn't like that. Um, can I contain a caller invocation that uses optional arguments? Are you kidding me? There's a more modern one. What do we got on this? Let's see if we... Wow. Oh, this is Jimmy's blog. No wonder. Um, okay. Start up host, blah, blah, blah. Reset checkpoint before edit test. Building the setup, execute, verify. Okay. Oh, no. That's fine. Uh, should edit employee, DB context employees, add. Yeah. Send async. Okay, but how do we test? How do we test? How do we test? I don't see it. Integration test mediator handlers. Unit testing them is probably a waste. I'm not testing them so much as I need to mock out the response. No, I, wrong, wrong. Um, I, a fake hosting environment. Oh dear Lord. Um, I don't want to get into that. No, this doesn't do what I'm looking for. No. Uh, uh Um. So this send has, and then a cancellation token. So we need to actually specify the. Um. It dot. Yeah. Uh is any. I don't care what it is. Right now, why doesn't it like that? Um, no. Hmm. And then do some sort of a test. Still doesn't like that. Matches any value given that it satisfies. Yeah, but why is... Th I mean, I'm literally cheating there. It was a cancellation token, wasn't it? Cancellation token. Easy for me to spell. Still does. Oh, there we go. Oh, finally. All right, dot. Um, right, I want a dot result. Right? I've set that up. I want, yeah, dot returns. Why am I not getting a dot returns on this? Right, why doesn't it like that? Why am I not getting that? That's weird. Um, it is cancellation token, so I've got the setup, so it's a mediator setup, and I'm setting up the send. Am I missing a bracket? It's on that one. Ah, oh, you're right. Now I'm on returns. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, good catch. Loving the stream, says Zerk. I finally found a .NET internship uh, at Lockheed in Orlando. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Congratulations. 
<clears throat> yeah, we're going to need to do this as a returns async because that setup method inside of create where that send is fired is awaited. So yes, we need to make this returns async, which means that um, <laughs> what the heck um, returns async. Uh, what's our value? Right. So what I'm going to be returning here is uh, lookup result in this scenario. So now requires a receiver of type I set up sequential result task object. What? Um, very cool. Congratulations there, Zerk. Um, let's... Uh, absolutely. A big applause for Zerk. That's... It's always great when you get that get that first gig. Um, that's only going to mean good things in the future. Chat seems pretty smart. How long have you been coding? Um, I've been coding for the better part of 20 years. That makes me old. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. But the, yeah, some other folks here in the chat room have been around for five, ten years. There's also, I see a couple folks here who are Microsoft MVPs in the chat room. Um, there's one or two... Uh, oh, QBasic. Listen to Kevin. The, there's one or two Microsoft folks in the chat room as well. So... Um, now, why am I getting this one? Set up iMediator task of type unit does not contain a definition for returns async. And the best extension method requires a receiver of type I set up sequential result. Now wait, send returns a task of type. Okay, so this needs to be a task. So let's call this task from result, right? And kind of cheat that there. And we still get... Uh, um, Sinclair basic. <laughs> uh, started playing around with Q basic on a 386 when you were 12. Oh yeah. All right. Um, why is this choking? Hmm. Oh, you know what? Article repo is set up up here. It's not available down there. Pity. So we're going to need to make this... Let's rename that. And let's promote it. Yep. Okay. And I also need logger factory. Now, why didn't it... I even F2'd it, and it still didn't. Um, all right. Over here, logger factor, I need to do the same thing. I need to promote this. So let's F2 to do the rename, and I'll put a underscore in front of it. Delete that. And we will create the read-only field. And now I don't think the clock is used anymore. I can... Let's leave it there for right now. I'll get rid of that. UCF. Oh, yeah. U University of Central Florida. All right. Now, I gotta, I'm still trying to figure out why this mediator setup right here, why this is choking on me. Mediator setup. Um, the best extension overload requires a receiver of type I set up sequential result task of task of object. Oh, no. Should this be, is it like a setup async? No. So I'm doing a setup that returns a task of type unit. Right? Okay, hang on. Does not contain a definition for returns async. Well, why not? Try that again. Okay, so that works. Now at the point that I say returns, yeah, there is a returns async, but it's an extension method. 
and it's going to return a unit or a value function. Yeah, look at all that nonsense. Ugh. Um, so a can I say unit dot No. I tried doing returns async and it doesn't like it. Use, hang on, use returns with task from result. So I do, if I do returns async, um, task, all right, hang on, task, and then the response type is unit from result, lookup result. Nope, doesn't like it. The generic version. What? Which generic version? Um, should be returns async, and then move this over here. And this is what you're suggesting? And then do that. Hey, no. No. Re re uh, task of task of unit, no. But if I make this then... No, doesn't like that either. Yeah. If I get rid of this, now I'm of returns async task of type object like this no uh, yeah I'm a huge fan of hackathons as well um, just a little bit trickier to deal with as uh, as folks get a little older Task from result. Oh dear lord. Use returns with a task from result. Oh. Oh. So, right. They're saying do this. And then, right, this returns is trying to return a task of unit of value. So do task unit dot from result look up result right so it wants a mediator unit but I don't have a right my my unit of work right that that's a struct uh Oh, come on. Right, unit has task and value. Do I really need to pass back the task? Value equals lookup result. Now, fat fingered that one, Jeff. Static field. Aha! Okay, that feels weird. That, that really feels weird. A static read-only field. I take a mediator isn't supposed to make this easier to read. I know! Uh, 
How about task mock ASP.NET user user one? Where's mock ASP.NET user coming from? No, this is a mediator thing where it's got this unit of work coming back. But the unit of work is static read only. It's a static read only struct. Yeah, this is... Right, I'm trying to mock the result from a, from a mediator send. And... Uh, mock mediator query. Uh huh. How to test with mediator. What is the purpose of of this? What a stupid answer. I'm getting the same issue. And that was voted up. Um no, no. This is the one that we previously looked at. Right, but where's my test? Right, there, it's... Okay, slice fixture. So what's a slice fixture? I, I don't see slice fixture anywhere. Container fixture. I don't see slice fixture. Uh, yeah, it is almost as bad as saying never mind fixed it. You're right, brutal Swede. <laughs> uh, slice fixture. There's that. Reset checkpoint. Okay, what what's a slice fixture? That's it. Okay. No. Test controller logic. No. Do not write mock heavy tests. I'm trying not to. Um, getting started with structure map. Introducing CQRS. No. No. Is it a problem with the mocked return value? Yes. And once again, folks on Stack Overflow, you need to handle the await and async of the send methods. Yeah. So that's the signature of send. Setup returns async new notification. Uh, what? Also, anyone who thought professional coding was all brilliant people hammering out code. Yeah. Could you avoid mocking in your test by having a test command handler? So, the challenge with that, and I see where you're going there, Niyami, is I'm then actually using Mediator. And I want to jump right out of Mediator. I don't even want to think about Mediator. I just want to swap it out and say, well, instead of using the real one, when this request happens, just do that. Just return this thing. Skip, don't even try and do a handler or build any of that nonsense. Um, I think I, I could use dot callback. Well, dot callback... Let's show what happens with dot callback. Dot callback... Still, we're going to run into this returning a task of type unit. Right? And if we look at our... 
not create new article, get article handler. Unit doesn't exist anywhere here. It's returning an article. Not that one. This one. So, would it be much, would it not be easier to just fake it? Create a fake mediator. That's what I've done here. There it is. Fake mediator. Oh, you're suggesting fake, not mock. That's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Uh, fake mediator. And there's two methods. And... Yeah. Publish, send, um... Uh, published, we, we're, I'm not actually doing anything with this, do nothing, return task dot complete a task, and this one I want to return some sort of an object, um, so let's set up a field, private, uh, read only t, response, I don't know what T response is. Object um, fake response. Object fake response. Return. could do that. Um, no, not from uh, from result. There we go. Static method to build a mediator in that link. Hmm. Wrapping mediator, build mediator. Wrapping writer. Oh dear lord. Build mediator writer. That's a heck of a lot of code. I'm going to stay uber simple here. And I like what folks were saying about... Let's do that. So then I don't need this. And then I can make this. What don't you like there? It wants the same thing and it's gonna get... Has the same name as the type parameter. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Uh, so then if I make this T response, I can also make this T, 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 yes. Um, <laughs> if I do that, this is still upset because it wants this and this to all be the same, which means that doesn't work. So I can't get that. Yeah, I like my test as simple and streamlined as possible. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to do the hard conversion here. And you know what, I'm, I'm okay with that. For the purposes of this, I'm okay with that. Right, because now I don't need to do all this nonsense mock mediator setup garbage. 
right? And I don't need to have this, right? Um, fake mediator. Sure, that's fine. Equals new, and I can't even set that up there. So now it comes down here. Um, var fake mediator equals new fake mediator. And then this is in the case where my response, where my uh, slug is null, my response is null. So then I'm passing in and then this should be that. Are we in a better place? I see some tests running. It does get complicated and time consuming, yes. Do we have any error lists? The modifier read only, oh, oops. Get rid of that. Okay. We've moved further along. Um, let's see here. So the error here is what? Right, on get uh, async null. So we've passed null in and we've set it up so that fake mediator should return null when it fetches that. In which case the article that's loaded, well, let's see what the article is that's loaded there. So here's something that you can do in Visual Studio. I'm going to debug this test right here. You don't want to get in the awkward situation where your testing logic is so big it needs its own test. Yes, that is a great point to Zarno. Oh my gosh. Totally agree. Then it gets really weird. Let me close those. Um, all right, so at this point, I have an article, even though even though it returned mediator returned null it shouldn't according to this it it shouldn't create an article so there that's an actual valid it shouldn't have returned it shouldn't have created an article um so this is so if the string is null or empty the slug if it's not down here this shouldn't have actually done anything. So let's get rid of that, because that's not supposed to be there. Let's see if it actually solves that test first for us. Ugh. I've got some green checks. That's a start. All right, let me go back over here. So that looks good. All right, next test. We need to bring our fake mediator friend down here, and I think we can get rid of this as well. So let's look at our next test. So in this case, with existing slug should redirect to article edit page. So fake mediator, this time in the create, it should return a new article domain that has that existing article, this. So let's say get existing article and now this should work. Yes. I'm seeing a pattern. All right. With new slug should return page with article that has topic and null content. So instead of this, um, I'm returning null because it does not exist. Works. I think. Tell me if I'm wrong, Ashley. I think we got everything working here. If you declare your mediator as I mediator, yes. Looks green to me. We got it. We got it. All right. So it looks like at long last, Yes, green means go. We need more tests. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I like the, I like the emote there, brutal sweet. Nice, nice. Uh, points to you for uh, for 
pretty cool little uh, emote there. The delicious green check marks. Um, so. Does it work? Does it still work? Chef Brent Hype. There we go. Loading. Building the website. Navigating. Uh, so far, so good. Still good. Still good. Uh, mediated article. This article was created with mediator. Go. Huh? Mm, oh yeah we got it we got it oh man add an article link so that's the piece that we're missing right that's the piece that we refactored out to simplify a little bit we still need that piece in there but we finished we, we finished just the refactoring here um, Senator Chess, did I make the whole website? We've been making, th so this is a project called Core Wiki that we've been making slowly and steadily here on stream. And, um, y you're welcome to go back and, um, uh, and check, uh, you know, our, our replays. There's, um, there's a series of links on our, uh, GitHub for this project. Um, here you go. All the shows where we went through and we talked about and we added features to this. Um, so very cool stuff that you can, you can certainly jump through and you can see exactly what we're talking about and how we got to where we are. But over the last two streams that we've done here, we've, we've brought in and we've finished this implementing mediator just here on the create page before i go back to the chat room i want to thank mad bones 41 and taro neck uh kais or is that kiss thank you for the follows um what's the upload field for on the new article page so you can actually upload um you can upload uh, uh what's it called things you know uh markdown and the javascript will parse it and put it into the box for you if you use that upload field. Um, all right. So here's what I'm going to do. So in create, we have, uh, I can remove that condescending comment. Um, we still need some to, uh, who was it who said we still needed some more unit tests? I think it was Brave Cobra who was saying this. We need to add some unit tests here for the post so that it knows so that we can test to make sure that we create the article correctly that we properly have a, a hydrated create new article command and we and our validation works we still need to refactor our validation out of this but we've completed refactoring and it continues working we need to implement this piece down here so let's put a note here to do um query for uh, query and identify whether to prompt the user if they would like to create um, additional articles. Okay, so we need to do this little bit in here, which that's okay. We lost a little bit of functionality, but it's not it's not central. To what we're doing here so we'll it will take this as a to-do item um i'll actually create that as an issue as i commit here um but i want to clean up i think we're we're wrapping up here today so let's let's hit the mario music um so i'm going to run back over to my shell let's go back to core wiki here's all of my changes that we need to commit so let's add all of that git commit uh, finished implementing mediator with, um, with the create page. Now there's still some refactoring to do there, but I'm okay with that. 
right? We have it working. This is an ongoing project that we can continue refactoring. We can continue moving some of these things out. So we've pushed this up. And let's create a, a, an issue. And I'm just going to... Um, broken. Let's... Um, need to... Uh, um, after article create... No longer prompts, prompt, prompts, yeah, there we go, for new articles, new article links, yeah. Uh, in project new data, uh, during our refactoring, we broke this feature. Need to re-implement, re-implement, there we go. All right, so let's submit that. I'm gonna put some labels on this. This is a bug. Um, I'm gonna mark it help wanted. So if anybody wants to wants to come through and, and submit some work on that, we'll review it on our next on our next stream. Um, and we also want to do some some more merciless refactoring in there. So the, the project's committed, the content is up here. And if we look at the code, we should see, if I go over to this branch, I should be able to jump in and see, um, here it is, it's still running that test. Hey, come on, restart that Mario music. Thank you. Let's see, we should see AppVare finish this build here in just a few minutes. And I'll jump through to AppVare. AppVare is running a little bit of continuous integration here to, uh, to test, run all of our tests, do a checkout, make sure everything builds properly, and give us some sort of an indicator inside of our project that the commits properly work, um, pass all of our tests before we go and merge, migrate, anything like that. So let's. I just want to wait and finish this check. Come on. Come on, little fella. There's the tests. 23 of 23. And the publish works. Build success. Love it. So if we refresh that, green check. What does Cake provide to us? Um, Cake will give us a standard way for us to build, um, give us a good way to build our Docker container that, that this can run in and run all of those tests for us and put all of the, uh, the build scripts in one place. So make it just a lot easier to, to manage all of that using a unified mechanism. All right. Um, does .NET Build not do this? Well, .NET Build gives you part of that. You still need to do a couple of other things in the mix. And if .NET Build changes it, or, you know, other things going on there, Cake gives us that level of abstraction so that our Cake script continues to work. All right. Um, I'm thrilled with where we got to today. We did a ton of of functionality here. We really finished updating Mediator, our Mediator implementation. Um, let's see if there's somebody out there that we can raid. Let's see, who's who's on game, dev not game development. I'm looking for programming. Who's programming that we can raid? Uh, oh, this guy, C-Sharp Fritz. Hmm. Wonder who he is. No, no. Um, let's see. You know what? I'm not seeing anybody. Doesn't look like anybody's up and running today. Infinite Loop Raid. Yeah. Never, never heard of him. Don't know who he is. So I guess we'll just wrap up here. Um, I will, of course, archive off. That music's a little loud. Come here, you. I will, of course, archive off this video in case you want to go back, you want to review anything. The source code for CoreWiki that we looked at today is out on GitHub under C Sharp Fritz CoreWiki. You can see it right up there above my head. Um, I encourage you, if you're interested in, in working with this, if you want to learn a little bit more about what we tried here today, go ahead and do a pull on that source code. Run it on your own local machine. Um, break it. Tinker with it. Um, get, get a little crazy with it. There's a whole bunch of issues out here. If you're interested in contributing, I'm more than happy to take your pull requests, review it here on stream together, give you some feedback, and also 
you'll appear on the scoreboard up at the top of the screen if we do accept it. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Like I said, you can check out that video later today on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, why don't you join us next time on Twitch? That's 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1400 UTC, 8 p.m. India Standard Time, live on Twitch, and on Wednesday at 4.30 Eastern Time, you'll find me hosting .NET Rocks on Fritz and Friends. We're going to have a crossover .NET Rocks podcast. They'll be interviewing me, but we'll have you folks in the chat room able to ask them questions while we're going along through the podcast recording. It'll be a lot of fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for .NET Rocks meets Fritz and Friends here, and we'll be back on Thursday for more live coding. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time.